there's a lot of ways for this to fail. How quickly, like, is it gonna close like almost at the last second? Like, or will it be mostly uh, closed and there's a small tolerance there and it skirts the whole thing by, uh, you know. Yeah, this is too risky, if not unrealistic. Human science has never even thought of this phenomenon, but SpaceX CEO Elon Musk is doing this with the largest and heaviest flying object ever made, Starship. It will definitely be a nail-biting moment when SpaceX's Mechazilla catches Starship for the first time. And it's much more insane and complicated than you'd think. Let's find out everything about this in today's episode of Alpha Tech. What goes up must come down. For many years in the past, rockets burn up fuel in a few minutes and splash down into terrestrial oceans, having put their payload on the right trajectory. But this is wasteful, and that's why scientists have dreamt of building reusable launch vehicles. The holy grail of rocket launchers is a concept referred to as the Single Stage to Orbit, or SSTO, vehicle. The idea is to use a reusable launch vehicle, an RLV, that has capability to deliver a payload to orbit and re-enter the Earth's atmosphere and land where it can then be refueled. The process can then be repeated with a short turnaround. Sadly, the reality is that achieving orbit with a single vehicle and a pure rocket engine, whereby all of the fuel and oxidizer for combustion is stored on board the vehicle, remains out of reach. Even with a propellant mass of 90% of the entire vehicle weight, expendable launch vehicles must tread on extremely fine lines between the masses of the propellants, the supporting vehicle, and the payload. This means that the payload mass, which achieves the final orbit, is typically no more than 2-4% of the initial weight of the launcher. The only way we currently achieve orbit is by stripping away the needless mass of the supporting structure and fuel tanks as the launcher's fuel begins to empty and this creates a multi-stage rocket. These stages may be in a series stacked on top of the other, as in SpaceX's Falcon 9, or in parallel, as in NASA's Space Shuttle. This wonderful technique helps the rocket be partially reusable. However, SpaceX is pushing the boundaries by not letting the Starship come to rest on its legs, but by catching it with a giant mechanized launch tower nicknamed Mechazilla. As a result, the Starship is meant to be fully reusable and have the capacity to carry over 100 tons to Mars and the Moon. Fully reusable Starship and Super Heavy systems are expected to allow for space-based activities that have not been possible before, SpaceX writes in the Starship User Guide. And well, you won't be able to imagine that this idea of Musk came from a clip from the 1984 film, The Karate Kid. The clip shows a man trying to catch a fly with chopsticks. This was shared by Elon Musk, and he wrote, SpaceX will try to catch the largest ever flying object with robot chopsticks. Keeping it real with his followers, Musk then wrote, success is not guaranteed, but excitement is. Yeah, how can you not be excited to see something like this happen and then live in a world where it's a reality? But get yourself a set of chopsticks and try it yourself if you want to see how difficult it is. I personally gave up. Now imagine in the case of SpaceX, things are actually a billion times more complicated. You may know the Starship spacecraft is 50 meters or 160 feet tall and has a dry mass of less than 100 tons or 220,000 pounds. Starship's payload volume is about 1,000 meters cubed or 35,000 cubic feet. It's larger than the International Space Station's pressurized volume by 80 cubic meters, 2,800 cubic feet, and can even be bigger with an extended 22 meter or 70 foot tall volume. In theory, the launch tower and its three mobile arms will play a crucial role in all aspects of orbital Starship launches. The first arm swings out to brace Super Heavy for Starship installation and connects the upper stage to power, propellant supplies, and other launch pad utilities. A more exotic pair of arms, nicknamed Chopsticks, has a more complex job. On top of using the chopsticks to lift, stack, and demate Starships and Super Heavy boosters in almost any weather and wind conditions, SpaceX wants to use the arms as an incredibly complex and precarious rocket recovery system. Now things start to become more intense at this point. For a Starship catch, the rocket will approach the tower, enter the gap between the splayed arms, hover in place while the arms close around it, and eventually come to rest on the hard points that appear to offer about as much surface area as a coffee table. 
based on a simulation of the process shown by Elon Musk calling it a catch is a misnomer. As the arms mainly move in one dimension, open and close, and they can't actually grab the rocket in any real sense. As built and shown, they're closer to a tiny fixed landing platform capable of minor last-second positional adjustments. Eventually, the chopsticks could shave a small amount of time off post-recovery processing, removing the need for a crane or for the same arms to attach to a landed booster or ship. They could also shave off the dry mass required for landing legs, though all interplanetary ships will still need legs. However, they will also inherently make proving their own efficacy a nightmare. By all appearances, the current recovery mechanism on the arms and the landing hard points on ships and boosters mean that a catch could fail if either stage is more than a foot or two from a perfect bullseye or rotated a few degrees in the wrong direction. With the method SpaceX has devised, even the tiniest error could easily end with a massive pressurized, partially fueled rocket destroying the chopsticks and plummeting a few hundred feet to the ground, guaranteeing an explosion that could damage the surrounding infrastructure or start fires. In the event of larger anomalies during a landing attempt, Starship could accidentally impact the launch tower, damaging or even outright destroying the skyscraper-sized structure. Yeah, exactly. Um, and especially not that launch ring, which is really difficult to make. Uh, that launch ring is very complicated. Ultimately, the immense risk posed by any catch attempt means that unless SpaceX has miraculously gotten the design of everything involved nearly perfect on the first try, the company will have to be extraordinarily cautious and expend a large number of ships and boosters to avoid rendering its only Starship launch tower unusable. Regardless, it's still super crazy. But the more you talk about it, at SpaceX, we specialize in converting things from impossible to late. SpaceX is not shy of challenges and is pressing ahead with a myriad of achievements at breakneck speed. The speed at which SpaceX has moved from concept to reality has barely given time to other commercial players to assess the impact SpaceX will have on their business plans, let alone react to it. The good news is we won't have to wait much longer to see the phenomena happen. SpaceX plans to attempt the Starship booster catch during the first orbital launch, so Starship's first orbital launch could end up being even more of a spectacle than it's already guaranteed to be. If successful, SpaceX will catch Starship on the second orbital flight. God bless them. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. Don't forget to share your ideas in the comments section, because everyone's support is motivation for us to create more quality content. Thanks, and we'll see you next time. Thank you.